أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن عليا ولي الله أشهد حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أرواحنا له الفداء اما بعد فعباد الله اوصيكم واوصي نفسي لتقوى الله والورع عن محارمه اوصيكم واوصي نفسي لاستعداد يوم الاخره يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم respected elders brothers sisters i begin by giving myself a reminder and thereafter you all a reminder 
to acquire and observe the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In today's khutbah, I wish to share with you one of the sayings of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad ala Muhammad, in which he speaks about a very important quality of a mu'min and a muttaqi. Muttaqi is someone who has taqwa. And in this khutbah of Nahjul Balagha, khutbah number 193, our first Imam says regarding the muttaqin, those who have taqwa, that they have a very specific way of looking at this world. Sabaru ayyaman qasira aqabathum rahatan tawila tijaratun murbiha. Yassaraha lahum rabbuhum Aradathumu dunya walam yuriduha Wa asarathum fafadaw anfusahum minha Extremely beautifully Amir al-Mu'mineen says that these muttaqeen they have a habit in the world <clears throat> What is their habit in the world? They are willing to have sabr for a limited short period of time because they know after this short period of time they have a very long period of happiness and bliss sabaru ayyaman qasira they are willing to have sabr for this short period of time because after that comes a long period of happiness and bliss Tijaratun murbiha. What is tijarat? It's trade, business. Amir al muminin says this is a very good business for a mumin. Short term, sabr. Long term, return. Aradat dunya walam yuriduha. The world sought for them. The world was after them. Walam yuriduha, but they did not have any interest in the world. Asaratum, the world was trying to make them asir, prisoner. Fafadaw anfusahum minha, but they paid a ransom and they escaped from the world. So, what is this thing called sabr? What is this thing that we say patience or perseverance? What is this exactly? Let's spend this khutbah looking at this aspect, inshallah. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Regarding sabr, he says, Patience to faith is like the head to a body. There can be no body without a head and no faith without patience. Iman has to be with sabr, otherwise it is not Iman. In a body you can be without hand, you can be without finger, you can be without leg, you can be without kidney, you can be without arm, no problem, you are still a functioning body. But it cannot function without a head. Iman cannot function without sabr. Number one. Number two, from the Holy Quran. قُلْ يَا إِبَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا Say that Allah says, O oh my servants who have faith, have taqwa. And then, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ hisab. Allah promises the patient ones will be paid their reward in full بِغَيْرِ hisab, Without any measure. Sometimes we have certain deeds, we say, well, if you do this, Allah will give you double. If you do that, Allah will give you triple. If you give money, for example, in the rahe khuda, in the way of Allah, you will get ten times. For patience, Allah says, there is no calculation. You don't know how much I'm going to give you. It's bighayr hisab You cannot calculate for sabr what is the reward. So now what is sabr? What do the Masu mean when they say sabr? They say, look at it in this way. One of the alims has explained it like this. It's a very nice way of explaining. 
He says, think of your heart and your soul as Maidane Jang, battlefield. Think of it as a battlefield. There are two armies on this Maidane Jang. One side is the army of your desires and your passions. Everything, everything to do with your physical body. How do I look? What clothes am I wearing? What car do I drive? What house do I live in? What can I eat? How much I can sleep? How much I can fulfill my sexual desires? All the things relating to your body is on one side. These are the army of passions and desires. On the other side, against this army, is another army of resistance. They say, no, you cannot fulfill your desires any way you want. You cannot just eat whatever you want. You cannot sleep all the time. You cannot just enjoy all the time. You cannot just spend as much as you want lavishly and luxuriously. There is accountability. There is a jawabdari, a, a, a responsibility. There is a day of judgment. Allah is watching you. This is the army of resistance. When these two clash, army of passion, army of resistance, this is jihad -e akbar This is jihad -e akbar One army says, what can give me pleasure in this moment? Forget the future, I'm not bothered. What can give me pleasure now? This is the army of passions. The other side say no. The pursuit of desires will make bad consequences for me in the future. This is the army of resistance. Every time you see the army of resistance is winning, that is called sabr. Whenever you see the army of resistance is able to resist and say, no, I cannot just do whatever I want, when I want, how I want. This is sabr. Someone, for example, he says, well, why can I not do business in these areas? I will earn a lot of money. This is the army of passion. But then he says, no. I have a Lord and I have a God to whom I will be answerable. I cannot just do what I want. This is the army of resistance. Now, what if we say this with Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad? Someone says, for example, someone says, for example, I will not do haram. I will stay in my halal and haram. I will do the wajibat. I will avoid the haram things. What's the problem? I'll pay my khums. I will make sure I don't deal in alcohol. I won't gamble. I won't bet. I won't do all of those things in Islam which are haram. But I will buy the best car. Who says I can't? I'm earning good money. I will buy an amazing house. Why does Islam limit me? I'm doing all my wajibat. I will eat the best food whenever I want. I will sleep with as many people as I want in a halal way. Who are you to tell me no? I'm not doing anything haram. So what does Islam say about this? In this saying of Amir al-Mu'mineen, we are looking beyond halal and haram. We are looking beyond halal and haram. If you want to reach any level of spirituality, if you want to reach close to Allah and you have an attitude that I will only do wajibat and I will only avoid muharramat, forget it. You are doing the bare minimum. Your reward will be the bare minimum. You cannot think I will become muttaqi and afzal and fazil and close to Allah 
and I will see angels and I will experience a lot of spirituality and I'll cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salam and I'll be inspired and my children will be on rahe haq. No. You are doing the bare minimum, my friend. So you will get the bare minimum. So what we say is, no, it's not just good enough to say, I will do halal and haram. We say this has three problems. When you indulge, even in a halal way, when you indulge in whatever you want, whenever you want, it has three problems. Number one, number one, it takes your energy. You are working all hours of the day. You are working round the clock. Your whole energy and mindset is on work, 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 money, money, money. It's taking immense amount of energy from you. Your religious life will suffer, whether you like it or not. It will suffer. Your community will suffer. Your community right now, it needs people. Where are these people? Maybe some of them are working crazy hours. Your family will suffer. There are fathers and unfortunately mothers, both of them, who are working round the clock. In the future, they see their children are all over the place, not on the right path. And they say, Are, asu te you. What has happened here? Baba, you are working all hours of the day and now you are saying, Are, suit you. It's not right. What do you think is going to happen? You are letting your TV and your iPads and your gadgets bring up your children. So what do you think is going to happen? Number one, it takes a lot of energy. Number two, it diverts you from what is really important. Not only are you using your energy in one area, you are not using your energy in the areas you should be using. And number three, perhaps the most important of all of these, the third consequence is, it makes you weak. It makes you very weak if you indulge in all manner of excesses and luxuries and lavish lifestyles. It makes you very weak in a spiritual sense. So now when you are hit with bala or calamity or difficulty, now you find it very difficult to adjust. Now you find it very difficult to mold yourself into accepting that reality which has come upon you. That calamity which Allah is trying to teach you something from, you won't learn the lesson. Why? You're too spoiled. You've led a life of too much luxury. Luxury is for small amount of time only. Everyone is going to be ill in their life or poor or suffering some kind of difficulty or family issue or marriage issue or child issue or health issue. One or the other will come. Then what will we do? So this is very, very important that we understand what is sabr. So Amirul Mu'minin says, Sabaru ayyaman kasira, aakabatum rahatan tawila. The muttaqeen are those people, they are willing to have short term difficulties. Short term, they don't indulge in so many laddat and pleasures and luxuries for a short term. Aakabatum rahatan tawila. After this will come a long period of bliss and happiness. Maybe we don't see it all in this world. Maybe we see it in the next world, but that is our real future. That is our true end. Inshallah, may Allah give us tawfiq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين respected elders brothers sisters regarding sabr we have many different classifications of sabr in different ways, from different points of view, we can classify it. But I want to give you the most common way of classifying sabr and the different types of sabr that we experience in our lives. 
Sabar is classified into three categories. The first one is called Sabar Anil Maasiya. Having perseverance to avoid sins. Sometimes in our lives we find that we go through periods of high spirituality. And then after a while it dies down. So we avoid a sin for a while. But then when things get tough or at certain difficult times in our life, we'll go back into that sin. This category of sabr says no. You keep sabr as much as you can upon all sins. You don't allow yourself to sin. This is called sabr anil maasiya. What is the criteria for this? The criteria for this is sharia, fiqh, and what your marja says. Sharia, fiqh, and what your marja says. Now someone will say, well, I don't believe in taqlid. I don't believe in marja yet. Well, good luck. How are you working out what is right and wrong? I don't know, but good luck to you. So this is number one, sabar anil maasiya. Number two, sabar ala ta'a. You keep persevering and you keep your sabr and you keep your steadfastness upon obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very similar to the first one. We go through periods of spirituality, we're doing lots of good deeds, then all of a sudden it, it, it stops or it breaks down or we become weak. No, this must continue. One of the reasons why we stop our spirituality is because in the back of our mind we say to ourselves Alhamdulillah now I'm a good person Alhamdulillah now I have achieved spirituality Alhamdulillah now I have taqwa if any of you me we ever say this is the worst <coughs> thing there's nothing worse than this in Islam we believe you can never reach a safe part. The moment you think I'm safe now, I'm a muttaqi, I'm a good person, believe me, that is the whisper of shaitan. It's never enough. It's never safe for us. It's always, we have to be very vigilant. Let me give you a story which Rumi, Jalaluddin Rumi narrates. He says about a man, he says this man was walking home one night in the winter. In winter it was dark, it was cold, he was walking along this path, this narrow path. He said to himself, you know, if I had a stick or a staff or something like that, it would help me walk. As he's walking, he looks down and he sees a stick. He says, oh, okay, now I have something. He picks it up and he uses that stick to walk and go through the pathway towards his home. <coughs> he enters his home, he puts his stick on the side. Now he did not realize that that stick was not a stick. It was a snake. That was a snake. It had frozen in the cold weather of winter. He didn't realize he used it as a stick. When he put it in his house, he put it on the side, the warmth of his home began to defrost this snake. And this snake slowly, slowly began to become warm and it became alive again. It wasn't dead, but it was just frozen. As it becomes alive, it sneaks up on him and it bites him and it kills him. Rumi says, your nafs is like this snake. Sometimes you might think, it has become dead, or it is not alive, or it's not dangerous. You don't know. It's very dangerous. Nafs chun as the ast, kay murde ast. As ghame bi alati, afsurde ast. Nafs is like ajdahe. Ajdahe? Snake. Nafs is like a snake. When does it die? It doesn't die. It just becomes disappointed for a while. But when it gets its opportunity, it will come back. 
از غم بیالتی افسرده است Thirdly the third category of sabr is sabr alal musiba to have sabr upon calamities and difficulties of life you know brothers and sisters when we face a calamity when we face a calamity we think we are the only one who has faced this calamity usually avi musibat koi upar nahi aayi hoye that's what we say this kind of calamity has not come to anyone before what nonsense everyone faces calamities everyone has problems everyone has issues the important thing is how do you deal with those issues imams faced issues imams faced calamities maybe more than anyone our aimma face calamities but the important thing is how do we deal with those issues so it is not actually jaiz to do certain things in calamities for example to say things like i have been faced with such a calamity this has happened to no one else before you're not allowed to say things like that or this is an illness which no one has experienced before i am the first person and this is the worst illness ever no it's not allowed to tear one's clothes to isolate oneself for a long long time it's not allowed this is not dealing with musibat properly this is not sabr ala al musiba there's a hadith from imam sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam allahumma salli ala muhammad he says if someone has a problem and accepts it and shows gratitude to allah for it then it is like the worship of 60 years someone asked him maula what do you mean accepts it what do you mean by that he says he should remain patient on it does not disclose this issue to other people and then when he wakes up the next day he says alhamdulillah now let's say you have a problem and you go to your doctor and the doctor says what's wrong with you and you say i can't tell you because i heard maulana in juma khutbah he said don't tell anyone your problems no here we are talking about problems when you disclose them to people who cannot do anything about it the common faryad and shikayat that we do the common complaining that we do to one another it's not right it's not dignified for a moment to do that is dignified as much as you can to deal with your problems in the best way and that is with sabr but when you have a counselor or you have a doctor or you have someone who can relieve you of your issue and can help of course there we must disclose now there's a one story which i want to tell you if you are ready for it inshallah with salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad There's one story from the time of our holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad about a very special and great mu'mina believing woman she says so her story was like this she was married and they had one son the son had developed an illness and the illness was prolonged and it was gradually deteriorating this boy so he was getting worse and worse one day it so happened that just as per their daily routine the husband went out in the morning to work and she was at home looking after the boy she was at home looking after the boy and on that day the boy died and she was home with the boy and the husband was out what what did she do she picked up the boy and she took him into another room on the side she waited for the husband to come home the husband came home she cooked the food as normal She served the food to the husband they sat down together to eat. The husband says, 
how is our child? She said, he is in the best of conditions. Since the time he became ill, he has not been in such a good condition as he is now. Look at this Mu'mina's way of dealing with this. Then she says, after a while, I spoke to my husband and I said, you know, I'm very surprised about our neighbors. He said, what happened? She said, you know, I gave something to them some time back. And today I wanted to take it back. I went to them and I told them, remember that thing which I gave you? Can you give it back to me? And they started to shout and they started to complain and they started to tell me all sorts of things. So the husband said, well, this is very bad. It's our thing. We lent it to them. We can ask for it back at any time. They should not do this. She said, now, look inside that room. There is our son. Allah lent him to us for a time. And Allah has taken him back. He was his and he has taken him back. Imagine this kind of approach. When someone gives you this kind of sabr and himmat and courage and support. This is dignified way of dealing with things. Did they mourn? Of course. Did they grieve? Of course. But not in an undignified manner. With full trust and recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times we have this habit when someone dies, we say, Bicharo Gujrigyo. It's fine to say that. Poor man has died. It's fine to say that because we feel love for them. But I often tell my children, in reality, they're in a much better place. If a mu'min passes away, what we believe is, inshallah, he's in a much better place. I tell my children, don't grieve for the dead. Grieve for the living. We don't know what situation the living are in. That is really the sad part. When we look at sometimes community and the situations that we are in, really it's a matter of grief. So this Mu'mina, in the future after this incident, the reporter of this hadith says that in the future, I saw that this couple had seven children. And they were all reciting Quran in Masjid al-Nabawi. And then the Holy Prophet said regarding that same Mu'mina that I saw in a dream that this lady is in heaven for her sabr. And in this regard, I just want to give you one final hadith and then we finish. There's a hadith which says that on the day of judgment, the shuhada, the martyrs, you know how amazing position the martyrs have in Islam? Amazing. Ahya'un in the Rabbihim yurzaqoon. They are with their Lord, close to their Lord, being sustained by Him. On the day of judgment, the shuhada will see that there is a group going to heaven before them. They will ask, who are these people who are going before even us, the martyrs to heaven? They will be told, these are the sabirun. These are the people of sabr. Why? Well, if you think about it, a martyr gave his life once. Martyrdom is a one event in your life. Sabr is all the time. This is why we should not be surprised that let's say on the Day of Judgment we have martyrs. They will be going to heaven, inshallah. Maybe their wives and their children go before them. Because after they have died, the sabr which the wives and the children have to have is something extraordinary. It could be those wives and children are going before those martyrs into heaven because of their sabr. Very, very special position, inshallah. We pray Allah gives us sabr and makes us amongst the sabirin, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen maulana wa sayyidina abil qasim muhammad. Oh, my God.
والصلاة والسلام على أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين وصير رسول رب العالمين مولانا علي ابن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد والصلاة والسلام على صديقة النبي الطاهرة سيدة نساء العالمين فاطمة الزهراء والصلاة والسلام على سبتي نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بأرض كربلاء والصلاة والسلام على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل وسلم على حجتك في أرضك وعينك في خلقك القائم بأمرك المنتظر لحكمك مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم صل اللهم عجل الفرج وسهل المخرج وجعلنا من شيئته وعوانه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات انك انك مجيب الدعوات انك على كل شيء قدير سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلوات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن مولانا أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين عليا ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاح حي على الصلاح حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله 